Okay. So this is, today we're doing section 7.1 and 7.2, which is point estimates. And so we're going to um, talk about how we can actually estimate. And this is really the whole point of statistics, or at least inferential statistics. So how do we use our probability to infer something about our unobserved population characteristics? Using our statistics that we calculate from our sample. And because remember we said it's too time consuming, too expensive to try and gather data from the entire population. Instead we gather data from our sample and try and use that information to find out things about our population. So our parameter is a quantity, which we're going to call theta, that is a property of an unknown probability distribution or the property of our unknown population. So our parameter is a property of our population, and our statistic is a quantity that we compute from our sample. And this is done in order to estimate the values of our population parameters. So for our first example, let's say we wanted to find the mean height of all students at USU. Now even though we have less than 20,000 students here on campus, that would still be very time consuming and difficult to track down every student and find their height, correct? So our population is all the USU students. We're going to let mu be our average height of the population for all USU students, or our mean height for the population. So mu, again, is our population parameter representing the mean height. In order to estimate our population mean height, we could sample, say, 100 students that were randomly chosen. Or I could have chosen 1,000 students or 200 students. Okay, so 100 is just the number that I picked. We could sample 100 students at random, measure their individual heights, and then compute x bar, which is the average of our sample. Now our sample mean x bar is our estimate of our population mean mu. Okay. So in other words, our sample statistic is our estimate of our population parameter. Okay. At this point, if you don't have the difference between parameter and statistic memorized, make sure you memorize that when you go home tonight. So what we're going to talk about first is point estimates, and then later in this class we will learn about things like confidence intervals. But a point estimate is when we try and estimate something with just one number. So our point estimate, which we call theta hat, and we use the hat symbol to tell people that we're, it's an estimate. So our point estimate theta hat of our unknown parameter is a statistic that represents our best guess of the value. And sometimes there's more than one best guess that you could come up with. Okay, So there's not always just one way to estimate our parameter. Now an estimate is unbiased if the expected value of our estimate is equal to our parameter. Okay? So if you take the expected value of theta hat, you should get theta. Otherwise, it is biased. And then that will make more sense once we try an example. The bias is defined as the expected value of theta hat minus theta. All else being equal, so like if the two estimates have equal variance, which is something we're not really going to discuss much, but I'm going to have you read the section in your book as part of your homework. Okay. Then the smaller the magnitude of your bias, the better. So we want smaller bias. Bias is a bad thing. So for example two, let's suppose that the expected value of x is mu over 2, and the expected value of y is mu. So is mu hat, which equals x plus y, going to be an unbiased estimate of mu? And if not, find the bias. So to do this, we're going to say, okay, well what is the expected value of mu hat? But mu hat is really x plus y. Now using your combination rules, this is really going to be equal to the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. And the expected value of x is mu over 2, and the expected value of y is mu. So if I add these together, I think I get 3 halves mu. Okay. What was I supposed to get for this to be an unbiased estimate? If I wanted it to be an unbiased estimate of mu, 
my expected value should have ended up being mu. Instead, it is 3 halves mu. Okay. So this is biased. Okay. Now, if I want to actually find the bias, that's defined as, well, just how far off was my estimate? So the expected value of mu hat minus mu. So my expected value should have given me mu, but it actually gave me 3 halves mu. So if we minus mu, that will tell me how far I was off. So it's going to give me and back to mu over 2. Now you will realize that this, of course, assumes that you know what the expected value of x and y are. And there are a lot of situations where we do know the expected value of x and y, and we can find these theoretical, look at theoretically and say, is it biased or not biased? So my next question to you might be, find an unbiased estimator from you. I'll tell you now, there could be more than one way to do this. So how do you think you could make, what could you make mu hat to be so that when I take the expected value, I will get mu? What are some various options for this? Okay. So let me give you one, and then I'll make you guys give me a different one. So what if I said that mu hat was x plus y over 2? So if that was the case, let's find the expected value of mu hat. So it's the expected value of x plus y over 2. And if I use my combination rules, this is the expected value of x plus 1 half times the expected value of y. Correct? So the expected value of x is mu over 2 plus 1 half times the expected value of y, which is mu. And that is going to be 1 half mu plus 1 half mu gives me mu. So this is unbiased. Okay. So that is an estimate okay, to try and find mu, where if I take the expected value of my estimate, I will get back to mu. Okay. So now that I've done that one, so I can think of at least one other estimate that would work here. Okay. What can we do to find another estimate that could work? You don't have to use both x and y. Okay, so we could do, so my estimate is 2x, and then if I find the expected value of that, so it would be the expected value of 2x, which is 2 times the expected value of x, so 2 times mu over 2 gives me mu. So this is unbiased. I can still think of one more. What's something else you could do? Do the expected value of y over 2 or y over 2. So if I do the... Okay, so what it should be? It would just be y. So if I just do my estimate is y, then the expected value of mu hat is the expected value of y, which is mu. So it is unbiased. So you see what we mean when we say there's more than one possible unbiased estimator. Okay. How do you think we might want to choose the best estimator? So being unbiased is good, but if you have several unbiased things, there's got to be some way where you can narrow it down a little bit. The next thing that we would look at after we see if something is unbiased is we might want to pick the estimate that has the smallest variance, okay? Because you would want to ensure that your variance or your estimates are going to be closer more often to your actual value, and so that would be a good way, or the way to ensure that is to find a smaller variance. So again, that's something you're going to read about as part of your homework. And I forgot to say, so do you have any questions on how we did parts one or part two? Let's 
so that those problems probably seem very abstract. Okay, here's where we actually care about it, or like why we do things like this. So let's say that x has a binomial distribution with n and p, and one of the ways that we try and estimate our population proportion or our success probability for the entire population is we find our sample proportion, and our sample proportion is defined as x over n. Okay, the number of successes over the sample size. And so we want to use our sample proportion, p hat, to estimate our population probability or population proportion, p. And we want to see if p hat is an unbiased estimate of our success probability, p. So to do that, I'm going to start off and I'll say, well, what is the expected value of p hat? Well, we defined p hat as x over n. Now n, your sample size, that's a fixed number when you take your sample, and we, n is going to be a constant. And so if it's a constant, it can come out of my expected value. And do you remember anything about the expected value for a binomial random variable? So if x has a binomial distribution with n and p, then the expected value of x is just n p. Okay, so that's what we already knew in the past. Okay. So this is going to be 1 over n times n p, which the n's cancel and I'm left with p. So my expected value of p hat to be unbiased was supposed to get me back to p. It did. So the sample proportion p hat is an unbiased estimator of the population proportion. Now I could say population proportion, or I could say the success probability of the population, either way. Okay. And so again, this is really why we care about it, because people in the past, they said, oh, if I want to estimate the population proportion, I could just use the sample proportion. And some statistician had to go through and work it out and say, is this actually going to be unbiased? Is it going to give you accurate estimates? So questions on this one? So for our next example, if x1, x2, xn is a sample from a probability distribution with the mean mu, okay, show that the sample x bar is an unbiased point estimate of the population mean mu. Notice here, I don't actually have to know what my population mean is. I don't have to know if it's 3 or 10. Okay. I just know that they all come from the same distribution with the mean mu. Okay. Show that the sample mean x bar is an unbiased point estimate of the population mean. So we start off by finding the expected value of x bar. And how do we get x bar? How do we find the average? We add them up and divide by what? the number of values, which would be n. Okay. Now again, that n is a constant. I can pull it out. So it's 1 over n times the expected value of x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn. I bet you guys never thought we'd use these rules for the combination so much, did you? So this gives me 1 over n okay, times the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 plus all the way up to the expected value of xn. And what were each of those expected values? They told me each of the expected values were 
mu. So mu plus mu up to the last one is going to be plus mu. And how many of those am I going to be adding up? N of them. So it's N. Sorry. I already had my 1 over N out front times it by N times mu. The N's cancel and I am at mu. Okay. So is this going to be unbiased? Yeah. Okay, so the sample mean is an unbiased estimate of the population mean. That's good. We like it when things like that happen. That if I want to find the mean of the population, I can just find the mean of my sample, and that's going to be a good estimate. Questions on those where we worked it out? So our last example, we're not going to calculate this. I'm just going to tell you it. So if x1, x2, up to xn is a sample of observations from a probability distribution with a mean mu and variance sigma squared, okay? Then our sample variance, which we defined as 1 over n minus 1, do you remember that when we learned about it on Thursday? We did 1 over n minus 1, okay? The sum from xi minus x bar squared, okay? Is an unbiased point estimate of my population variance. Okay. And we looked and we said that's kind of strange that it has the n minus 1. Okay. And I told you that the reason why is that it is unbiased. Okay. The proof for that is in the book. You can read through it. It's just a bunch of algebra. Okay. But it turns out that if you want to find the population variance sigma squared, you do need to divide by this n minus 1 instead of just 1 over n. So, any questions here? So I know it's early, but let's take our...